Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. Bringing you an update on the magnetic reversal and facts and science as they unfold before our very lives. Now, many of you are under the supposition that a major volcanic eruption will cause the end of the empire and the destruction of the planet. Well, I'm here to tell you that even a volcanic eruption the size of Yellowstone almost 700,000 years ago would not affect the population on Earth greatly. And there have been many stories, including the Toba theory, which states that the largest eruption in the last 2 million years caused a bottleneck in humanity the likes of which we've never seen, is all a fraud. Now, what you're looking at is the facts. The facts over the last thousand years that volcanic eruptions, VEI 6, 7, or greater, cause the temperature on Earth to drop. And that's true. Because you're looking at the data. Now, the underlying data of the temperature anomaly, I harvested from a paper and then I researched the volcanic eruptions in the last 1,000 years that were major, and I overlaid them with the arrows. The correlation is stunning, and it shows a direct connection between the drop in temperature on Earth and volcanic eruptions. In fact, it shows that these drops last 3, 5, 10 years and can drop the temperature as much as 1 degree. But what does that do to human populations? New studies coming out find that ancient humans weathered the Toba supervolcano just fine. And this is after the majority of the population was duped into believing that the Toba eruption caused our population to reduce to nearly just thousands of people. It was that bad. Unfortunately, this new study suggests the largest eruption in the last 2 million years caused populations to flourish. Now, volcanic eruptions can be bad for more than the unlucky people living in their shadows, but scientifically it is becoming clear that there is very little effect globally. Now, I don't mean that people aren't going to jump off buildings when the skies go dark, but I mean that in general, the population of humanity does well post-volcanic eruptions. And do you know why that is? Well, it's because of the work of Svensmark. These volcanic eruptions cause it to rain, and they eliminate many droughts worldwide, causing a boon to agriculture, especially if you relocate after the eruption. And that's exactly what happened after Toba erupted. It's the out-of-Africa hypothesis. In fact, after the eruption of Toba, the entire Earth was repopulated with a very large population worldwide. An archaeologist at two sites in South Africa, a series of coastal caves inhabited by early humans called the Pinnacle Point and Open Air Site in Velispai, sampled the sediments until they found microscopic evidence of the Toba eruption. And using a relatively new technique called op optically stimulated luminescence, which indicates the last time a grain of sand was exposed to sunlight, researchers were able to show that the two sites were occupied at the same time of the eruption. And the story told was one not of cataclysm. The data sets from their research and the nature paper complement one and another and together indicate the Toba super eruption had little effect on the climate of Africa and the humans who were living there. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, I'll tell you. The Toba eruption happened in Sumatra in Indonesia, which is in a different hemisphere. It was up to 1,000 times bigger than any of the eruptions you're looking at here. In fact, the Krakatoa eruption ejected, let's say, three cubic kilometers of debris into space, where the Toba eruption erupted over 4,000 cubic miles of debris a factor of 1,000 greater than Krakatoa. And yet, it didn't affect the Northern Hemisphere. Hmm. Well, I guarantee it wreaked havoc on the Southern Hemisphere, but there's something called the equator 
that prevents the transmission of stratospheric aerosols from one side to the other. Now, they do mix, but it takes decades to mix. And apparently, the mixing was slow and the cooling was even slower. And just as I've suggested and suspected the whole time, there are really no major instantaneous effects. But I assure you, a decade or two is instantaneous geologically. And if the temperature drops 12 degrees in two decades, you're going to feel it. But you'll probably live. But based on a new paper coming out now, during a magnetic reversal, you probably won't live, which is what we're also living now. We don't have to worry alone about the eruptions caused by grand solar minimums and increased cosmic rays. But we also have to worry about the facts. And the facts are in. Geomagnetic field intensity is the controller of survival on the planet. Nothing more. I have been studying this now for three decades. And it is my conclusion that the number one controller of survivability on Earth is the geomagnetic field. Nothing else. In fact, based on the paper we just discussed, even VEI 7 or 8 volcanic eruptions have little effect on human population. Now, locally, they will be devastating. Hemispherically, they will be catastrophic and people will run to the hills and claim Armageddon and jump off buildings. But overall, we live, we make it, we survive and we thrive after volcanic eruptions. I have seen no evidence to suggest otherwise. Now, what you do have is a cacophony of fear mongers on YouTube and other independent sources claiming that volcanic eruptions spell the end to humanity. But there is not a single shred of scientific evidence coming into the mainstream in recent years to suggest this. And based on my analysis, it suggests that we're out of the woods. It doesn't even matter if Yellowstone erupts. Everyone downwind will burn but the rest of the world will survive and thrive with increased rains and runoff, agricultural increases, increased CO2 causing increased growth in plants and crops. Think about it. The facts are in. Now, what we do have to worry about is increased UVR. The authors believe in this most recent paper that the role of UVR in the disappearance of animals and hominids is far more important than overkill by humans or volcanic eruptions or changing climate. And what I mean by that is that none of those factors actually matter. It's simply a narrative purported by the mainstream, which is the lame stream, to scare the shit out of you. When the real reality is the magnetic reversal, which not a single soul is talking about, and the magnetic field intensity. Here you see a major flexure point 45,000 years ago. Right after that flexure point, Neanderthals went extinct. And what emerged at this hump right here is a new species called Cro-Magnon, which built the pyramids and every other major megalithic structure on Earth that you're aware of. And then again, the magnetic field dropped down here to 12,500 years ago, where the Clovis people went extinct. But populations flourished. And here we are today at 8 billion after multiple volcanic eruptions, which didn't seem to affect the population. Now, the population increase worldwide kicked off at 1800 and has reached epic proportions after Tambora. And that has everything to do with global temperature and nothing to do with volcanic eruptions. So it is my supposition that the role of geomagnetic field intensity and evolution of humans in large mammals is the key in unraveling what's about to happen. Cosmic rays and neutrons are about to rain down on you during this magnetic excursion, which is happening now, will increase for the next three decades and probably culminate in a reversal or the end of the excursion sometime in 2035-45. And if background levels of neutron radiation can explain errors in computer memory, well... Heads up, DNA. 
I'll leave you this paper revisiting the biological ramifications of variations in Earth's magnetic fields and what it basically concluded 11 April 2019 is exactly what I told you in layman's terms. The only thing that we are aware of that controls evolution is the magnetic field. The magneto sheath prevents and protects us from harmful cosmic radiation. Well, it's waning, and now they're raining down on us, and you're getting burned, and you're feeling a hotter sun, and you're believing the global warming narrative as increased UV, A, B, C, and other cosmic radiation heats your skin and causes mutations every single day. Cover up. Stay safe. Learn to prep. Learn how to wildcraft. Learn what happens when the grid goes down. This is all about to happen in your life. And we've proven that changes to Earth's magnetic field cause mass extinctions. Not may have, conclusively have. And we've also concluded that the Toba eruption 74 kilo years ago did not have any major effect on population, regardless of what everyone thinks about this bottleneck scenario. The bottleneck was picked up because after the Toba eruption, people saw the sky darken and they migrated. There was a mass migration which showed up as a bottleneck in genetics. But what it actually was, was a mass migration causing massive diversification in humanity. Homo floriensis, small humans, large humans, giants, nymphs and the like, all happened after this event. And, and the magnetic excursion added insult to injury, causing more genetic variation. And by the time we hit 34,000 years ago, we were so genius, we had arts and leisure. This is only 7,000 years after the instantaneous, spontaneous creation of Cro-Magnon, right at the flexure point in the magnetic field. 7,000 years later, we were doing arts and crafts and had advanced science, yes, and art. We were doing sculptures, the likes of which only 1% of the population could replicate today. Not only that, by 12,500 years ago, Clovis people had invented a technology of hunting that is still not replicable. They made spear points that are so precise that it's anyone's guess how they had that technology. Now, what we want you to glean from this presentation is the fact that cosmic rays are king. The magnetic reversal is king. The grand solar minimum plays zero effect. Even if we have a VEI-7 eruption, even if Yellowstone goes off and every other volcano, it does not affect humanity as a whole. It will affect the grid. And based on the 8 billion sheep that we have now, the majority of them will die within a month. But that doesn't matter. We will recover. What you're looking at is the last 150,000 years. Every single one of the gray lines, hash marks, or drop downs in any of these graphs represent a 10 degree C change in Earth's climate. Nothing like we're experiencing today in the Holocene warm Nothing like the mainstream purports is catastrophic. Nothing that causes evolution. 100% of all climate science has been fraudulently taken over by the mainstream, which is full of shit. You will learn nothing listening to them. <clears throat> and the most recent mass grave discovered in Peru shows mass, <coughs> yes, sacrifice of children and babies because of a simple grand solar minimum. And humans as a major geologic and geomorphological agent in the Anthropocene, which is a fake time period, <coughs> <coughs> should lead you pause. Excuse me for my coughing. A lot of dust in the region. We are living the dust bowl. But I want to bring you back to this data set and show you that in recent history, the sun has eliminated population. The Black Death in 1350 brought the population to a standstill. The Roman Warm swelled population and then it was crushed during a grand solar minima. 
during the beginning of the Maunder Minimum, crushed the Oort Minimum, and on and on, we can see the effects of the sun. They're minor, they're recent. The bigger effects are more obvious. Extinction and evolution is caused by magnetic excursion. The field intensity is the key. And the field intensity is weakening. Are you preparing? Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when we are about to suffer major losses because the, the powers that be do not want the population to be informed. It would be simple to teach everyone what happened in the past. We're just not teaching it. Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. Volcanic eruptions instantly cool the planet for years, even decades. The Toba eruption cooled the earth for over a thousand years. Yet, civilization moved on. They migrated. They learned new techniques to survive and thrive. The stopping point is the magnetic field excursion, which you're living now. Magnetic reversals cause extinction and instantaneous speciation. There's nothing you can do to prepare for that. But you can prepare for the times that come as we drop off the cliff. The grid will go down. There will be global unrest. And you will need to eat and drink water. Your best bet is to be away from major population centers. Learn how to grow your own food, wildcraft, hunt, harvest, fish. And most of all, you need a good well. This is the best I can direct you. The geomagnetic field intensity controls evolution of humans and large mammals. Are you preparing to be controlled? Because the controllers are preparing to herd you. Be safe, everyone. Share this with like-minded people. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We're happy to answer them. All the links to all of the papers and all the graphics are below in the... Yes in that little spot that says show more. Figure it out. We love each and every one of you. Preparewiththeranch.com. Check out our preparedness store on Amazon. We have every single item you need to survive and thrive in the coming times. When the grid goes down, will you have what you need? Will you be underground? Will you be evolving? I think so. Be safe. We love you.